Are you looking for resources to simplify your teaching and planning of general music this next school year? In this video, I'm going to show you eight ready-made resources that will make your job easier and help you to teach with confidence. Hi, I'm Julia from GU Teaching Resources, and I'm a music teacher with over 20 years of teaching experience in the grade 7 to 12 music classroom. Planning and teaching for your general music classes can be challenging at times, but I've put together this list of essential classroom tested resources to make it easier. With these curriculum and assessment resources, you'll be able to plan efficiently, save time and engage your students like never before. So let's get started. Eight essential resources to make teaching and planning for general music easy. So welcome. As I said, we're going to talk about eight essential resources to make it your job for general music much easier. Hi, I'm Julia from GU Teaching Resources. My mission is to help busy music teachers like you in classrooms around the world with the resources that you need to teach music appreciation to inspire the next generation of musicians. Before we get started, if you'd like a freebie, if you're looking to actually change up what you're teaching and you want some ideas, go and grab this free guide to make over to your, your music curriculum. You need to go to juliagia.com forward slash make over your music curriculum all smooshed together. And as I said, put your details in and you will get that guide that has five different ways that you can make over your music curriculum. Teaching general music is an exhilarating endeavour that enables us as music teachers to inspire the next generation of musicians. However, as a music teacher, you know all too well that maintaining a focused and engaged classroom of middle schoolers can present its fair share of challenges. They're interesting, let's face it. That's where the power of carefully selected resources comes into play. By integrating the right tools and materials into your lesson plans, you can create an environment where your general music students not only learn, but also develop a deep love and appreciation for music. In this video, we will explore how leveraging these resources can significantly reduce behavioural issues and foster a heightened level of student engagement throughout the year. Now, I'm not saying that all these resources are going to fix all of your behaviour problems, but what I am saying is if you have those resources ready, you can focus on those kids that might need a little bit of extra support in your classroom. As a music teacher, you understand that a harmonious learning atmosphere is crucial for student success. When your students are actively engaged and excited about the content they are learning, behaviour problems tend to diminish naturally. By incorporating captivating resources into your general music curriculum, you'll have the opportunity to capture your students' interest right from the start. Now, all the resources I'm going to talk about are all stuff that I've used in my own classroom for years, and they work. Now, I'm not saying they fix every single class, but they do work for 90% of them. Now, there's always going to be that one class that you go, I don't know what I'm doing. No matter what I do, it's not working, but keep persisting. Something will work with them, okay? But for the majority of your classes, these resources will work. I still am having little moments of um, year seven, period five on a Friday. That was the last lesson of the week. Oh, still have moments. I had it for years. I don't know why they kept doing it to me, but was always the most difficult class, period five on a Friday. Horrible. Life is real. <laughs> Sorry, I digress. Anyway, one of the primary benefits of utilising appropriate resources in the general music classroom is the ability to cater to students' diverse learning styles and preferences. Whether it's visual aids, interactive software or hands-on instruments, incorporating multi-sensory sensory elements into your lessons can greatly enhance student comprehension and retention. The right resources for your students, your students, act as bridges, connecting abstract musical concepts to real life experiences, making learning music more tangible and relatable. And that's the key to success. When you use a variety of engaging resources, it stimulates active participation and collaboration among your students. From group activities that encourage teamwork to interactive games that promote friendly competition, these tools foster a sense of camaraderie within the classroom. Your, your music student 
your music students feel connected to their peers through music, they become more invested in the learning process, resulting in increased motivation and improved behaviour. Five common general music teacher problems. These are things that we all struggle with. So as a music teacher, you know that teaching students between the ages of 10 and 13, we're talking that middle school age group, is not always an easy task. Students this age come with a unique set of challenges as they are becoming teenagers. And we all know that hormones, what they do to this age group. But some other challenges that you might face in the general music classroom with this age group include age-appropriate resources. It's either too young or too old. That's what I always found. Resources that are aligned with the general music syllabus, things that are going to work with what you're supposed to be teaching. A limited budget. I don't think I've talked to a music teacher who has had the budget they need, ever. Diverse range of learning abilities within the classroom. And your time pool. As music teachers, more than any other subject, we are really time poor. Finding age-appropriate resources that strike the right balance between being engaging and suitable for a specific age group can be challenging. Many resources may be too simplistic or juvenile for middle school students, and they'll let you know pretty quick if they are, while others may be too complex or advanced for their skill level. Struggling to find age-appropriate resources can hinder effective teaching and student engagement. Now, I say that <clears throat> every year, though, when I'm starting with... Um, performances and we're starting just to get the kids playing on an instrument because for me most of my kids have had very very little instrumental experience so we'll start on glockenspiels and xylophones okay it's something we will start on because everybody can have a go and I will start with hot cross buns now what surprises me is one a lot of kids don't know that little nursery rhyme and two they actually are happy playing it even though I think it's actually way too young for them and the other one they love to play I can't I don't get it Baby shark, they love it. And again, I don't think it's age appropriate. I think they would want something a bit, you know, something a bit more current. But I tell you what, they love playing it. Don't I? Don't ask me why. But finding that right balance and finding something that works with your kids is can be a struggle. The next one, aligning music resources with the established general music curriculum and learning objectives is crucial for effective teaching. Now, no matter where you teach in the world, there's going to be a set of um, music uh, outcomes that you need to actually teach to and make sure that your kids are addressing at each year level. And how you do that and how you approach that is, um, is up to you. I know myself, we are given a very general um, syllabus and certain number of outcomes that we're supposed to um, address within the course. And how we do that is up to us. There's a compulsory topic, one topic we have to do, but the rest of it is up to us what we, what we actually um, teach and how we teach it and what order we choose to teach it in. So there's a very wide scope. Now, if that's um, something that sounds familiar to you, sometimes it actually makes it harder because you've got so much that you can actually draw from and you're trying to narrow it down because you can't teach everything, but you've got to find what's right for your kids. All right. And that's where this, um, what I'll talk about is going to hopefully help you. However, finding suitable general music resources that directly address the required content and skills can be time consuming and overwhelming. It's important for general music teachers to locate resources that align with their curriculum framework and support the desired learning outcomes. I remember seeing in a um, Facebook group recently, there was somebody who was very excited about their new job and, you know, congratulations to them. It was their first, um, going to be the first teaching position, but they had grades um, like kindy to year 10, grade 10, and there wasn't anything left for them. They were starting from scratch and they wanted to know where to start from. And I literally pointed them in the direction. I said, go to your syllabus. What do you want each, each group to know by the end of their time with you? So at each, at the end of each year, and that's, that's what you start with because you can't do like it's really hard to get that big picture thing in. Like you've got to break it down. The next one, limited budget constraints can be a significant obstacle for general music teachers when seeking resources. Again, there's a number of Facebook groups I'm in and I see that these poor poor people who are um, asked, being asked to teach music and develop um, to deliver a music program 
but they're maybe given a budget of $300 for the year and they might be teaching six different grade levels. I'm sorry, but $300 is not going to go very far, especially if you like, if you want to buy one xylophone, how are you going to get 30 kids to play on one xylophone? Like seriously, like honestly, the, the, the budget thing just floors me. And I know personally, you know, I used to run a faculty and so I was responsible for making sure that music, art, photography, um, and drama all got their fair share of the budget that I was given, which was limited. But we worked very strategically as music teachers going, okay, so one year, right, we're going to buy one class set of ukuleles. The next year we bought a second set. So we had both, we had um, both had a set. Then we were making sure we all had enough um, guitars or you, whatever, whatever it happened to be. But we built it up slowly. And sometimes that's what you've got to do as well. Quality resources such as musical instruments, software and supplementary materials often come with a price tag. We know they do. You know, if you were going to have to replace a um, upright piano or a grand piano, we're talking thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. If you've got to replace a sound system, we're talking thousands of dollars. And having that limited budget can make it really hard because it's, makes it hard on you as the teacher trying to actually teach with um, very little resources, but also makes it really hard for the kids because they don't get that full experience. It can be challenging to find cost-effective resources that provide adequate value and meet the unique needs of the students within the given budgetary limitations. This can be even more difficult if you don't have a supportive administration that is willing to spend money to ensure that quality lessons can be experienced by your music students. And that's what it comes down to. And that's what I used to have to fight for sometimes and say, this is not for me. This is for the kids. Okay. When you give me extra dollars, I can actually buy a whole class set instead of kids sharing an instrument. We're talking, everybody gets to have a go at the same time. You know, everybody on a guitar, everybody on a ukulele, everybody on some sort of tune percussion, whatever it happens to be, everybody on an African drum, a djembe. You know, you need need some, enough for every child. The next one is in any given general music classroom, there is likely to be a wide range of abilities, interests and learning styles. This diversity poses a challenge when selecting music teaching resources that cater to the varying needs of individual students. It's essential for music teachers to find resources that can be differentiated easily to accommodate different skill levels and provide inclusive learning experiences. Now, I know, and I'm sure you have experienced as well, that in a classroom, um, say you have a low ability, like literacy um, struggling group, and yeah, they might struggle with that, but you, within that group, you might have some kids who like latch onto the guitar or are amazing vocalists or can play the drums like you wouldn't believe. And those, like their skill levels up here and the rest of them are down here. Okay. And that's what we're talking about, especially in the music classroom, that the skill level, the musical um, ability or the instrumental ability is wide. Also their ability to comprehend this, the um, concepts you're teaching is often very broad again, because it comes with different abilities. And I, I like the last school I was teaching at, we had um, what they call a selective stream. So the kids actually had to sit an exam to be um, a part of that thing. So they were gifted students, um, gifted and high potential students. Now within that group, they might've been high potential students in maths or in English or in history or in science, but they weren't in music. And a lot of those kids really struggled when they were in music because they didn't achieve at the level they did in every other subject. So even when you've got a what's called a top class, you might still find that you have a massive ability range. And as music teachers, that's what we have to be able to um, work with and address. And that can be difficult. And the last thing, general music teachers often juggle multiple responsibilities, including lesson planning, grading, and a lot of extracurricular activities. This limited time makes it difficult to thoroughly research and evaluate resources to ensure their quality and suitability for the classroom. Music teachers may find it challenging to dedicate enough time to explore and select the best resources that will effectively engage and educate their students. Now, I'm preaching to the converted here, but you know yourself how many times, you know, if there's a um, an assembly or some sort of school event, they don't ask, sorry, maths people, but they don't ask the math people to do a demonstration. They ask the music department to put on some sort of musical performance so that it can accompany, like whether it starts the um, the assembly, finishes it, something in the middle, some sort of entertainment. They might ask for an art display. They might ask for this, but the amount of time that it takes for a music teacher to get something ready is 
you know, it, it, it eats into your planning time. The number of times I know that like if we had an assembly, they go, oh, can you do, you know, a performance and blah, blah, blah. I said, yeah, I can, but you need to give me time to actually get all the equipment down there, all the equipment set up, all the things, the time for the kids to actually have a rehearsal in the set, in the space. And all that time, eats into your planning time. It's into all that other stuff. And as it, the nut, ugh, been doing it for years, but as music teachers, that's something that is um, part of what we do. And we do it because we love it. Don't get me wrong. I did love it. But at a sacrifice sometimes to other things. So this is where personally, one of the reasons I came up with the resources that you're about to see is because of all that extracurricular stuff. And if I wanted to do a musical, if I wanted to do a show, or I wanted to do something else, something had to give. So what I did was I made sure that I had all my resources ready for the year. And once I had the resources ready for the year for my junior classes and for my other classes as well, to an extent, I did adjust as I need to for them. Um, but for my junior classes, okay, my year sevens and eights, I had everything ready for the year. And the resources I'm about to show you are what I use for my year seven class, or I did for in one school I taught at, have them for the other school, and I'd have everything ready, ready for the year. So I'd literally go, okay, what class, right, um, what was the last thing we did? Great, we're picking up from here. And it would just made it so much easier in terms of planning and all those sorts of things, and I didn't have to think. It also meant that um, for some, if someone had to take over my class, I could say, they're up to this lesson, they can do this. And it just made my life so much more easier. But as I said, I want to make yours easier as well. And that's why um, I'm going to show you these resources and why they were developed, but also there's so many benefits for them. So as a music teacher, the benefits of using ready-made general music curriculum or collection of lessons far outweigh the initial cost of the resources. There are five main benefits of using ready-made resources in your classroom. One, it's basically all about time. Saves you valuable lesson planning and prep time. Helps you to be more prepared ahead of time for multiple classes and grade levels. Because let's face it, as a music teacher, you teach a lot of different grade levels. Gives you time to focus on students who might need extra support in the classroom because you're not focusing on other things. Gives you time to focus on extra curricular activities like putting on a show, a musical or a concert. And your students will be more focused on the learning and the lesson and not on disrupting the learning of others when you have everything ready to go and you're not floundering, okay? I've seen many a young teacher... And I'll, like, you know, you're supervising them. You go, okay, what are you doing for the lesson? And they give you this idea. It's like, okay, right, let's see how this goes. And they're not ready. They're not really ready for it. But if you can come in there confident with your kids and go, right, this is what we're doing today. This is how we're going to do it, blah, blah, blah. It's so much easier for you and for the kids. So I'm going to show you four units of work to teach in general music. As I said, this is what I used to use for my year sevens. Changed when I moved to a different school because um, the way that the, the school was structured. Um, in my previous school, they would do music in year seven and eight, okay? And so then we had to spread out the curriculum over two years. In my current school, we teach music in year seven and then they do visual arts in year eight. So I'm condensing two years into one. So things sort of had to change a bit. And look, it's still the same sort of thing, but I did I do different units um, at my current school than I do in my previous school. But this is what I used to use for my year sevens especially. But it could be used for year five, six, seven, eight, um, depending on your ability. Now, please remember, when I get my kids They've had very, very, very little to no music experience. They haven't had the luxury of, of being taught music in elementary school or primary school. Very, very little. They might get to sing a song. That's about it. Okay. Most of the most of the kids I get, very, very little music experience. So I start at the beginning. All right. And that's why it starts very, very basic. But anyway. In the general music classroom, the impl implementation of complete units of work offers a holistic approach to music education that encompasses music history and appreciation, elements of music or concepts of music activities, practical hands-on instrumental lessons and extension exercises. The following four carefully designed classroom tested music units integrate these components, making your job as a music teacher easier while creating a well-rounded learning experience that deepens your music students' musical understanding and fosters their love for music. On the next few slides are four essential units of work that you can use to teach in the general music classroom. These units are listed in the order that I personally teach them um, and they've been taught in classrooms around the world in this order as well. And they will take your music students on a logical learning journey. Okay, now before I forget, I want to show you one thing. So just hold on.
So, right, so this is my um, semester two, okay, year seven music. Now, what I do is for each of these units, I put two units together, that's semester one, and then the next two units together, that's semester two. Now, I don't print one, I don't print worksheets for all my kids. I don't do that because, you know, I'm teaching um, 200 kids across a, a year group. That's how many we have in the year group. And I might be teaching four classes. So that's 120 kids. Um, I don't print out worksheets for every one of those, but we do have a book. And so what we use is we use, we put the information into the book already so that when they are doing, all right, we, we're going to be looking at the film music one anyway. Okay. Music in the movies. And they were doing maybe this activity, the first um, KWL chart. Okay, they've got this book, but they put all the information into write it into their own exercise book or composition book. I think you might call it in the states. Um, but I don't print. I print off enough of these and these to go into one between two students. Okay, and honestly, that we've had these books. We might replace one or two every year, but we have them, and they last for a few years and yes it's a lot of in initial com um, cost in the setup but I tell you what it it makes it your job so much easier if you've got everything ready and that's what I mean by everything ready it's done 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 so the first unit I like to teach is rhythm and rap so much fun this one the beginning unit rhythm and rap unit um, for the general music classroom is a vibrant and engaging approach to teaching note values aimed at enhancing students understanding and reading skills through the fusion of rap music and rhythmic exploration, this unit creates an immersive learning experience where students not only learn to interpret note values, but also develop a deeper connection to the rhythmic elements of music by incorporating catchy beats, rhythmic patterns, and a fun collaborative composition assessment, which I'll show you later. This unit fosters a dynamic and enjoyable environment for students to grasp the foundation of note values while embracing their own musical creativity. Now, usually when I'm teaching rhythm and rap, we will do bucket drumming as our instrument, okay? A, a lot of percussion work because we're reading note values, okay? And you've got the, um, I use, um, they're in my store, the flashcards, rhythm flashcards, and I put them up and, you know, we might have just taught, and excuse me when I say crotchets and, and quavers, you might say quarter notes, eighth notes, sorry if I get it wrong. But we, you know, we do lots of um, rhythmic work so that they are ready for the actual assessment. So that's the first unit, rhythm and rap. We focus on note values, note, um, you know, time signature, meter, all that sort of thing. And as you can see here, now the thing is within each of these units, okay, is all the information and it's also got all the links to different things. So slow tempo, medium tempo, um, fast tempo. So the kids get to listen to it as well as um, find out information about it. Now, on in the blog post, I've got the, all these things, which is um, basically a curriculum map of how things work for my kids and how it works for me. Now, I deliberately have not put in outcomes because the ones I use here in New South Wales, they're going to change very soon anyway, um, but they're going to be different to what you use. But you would have performance outcomes and listening outcomes and composition outcomes and maybe appreciating outcomes. I don't necessarily have appreciating ones, but we still cover it because it fits into everything else. But you can see this is what the um, the lessons are over a nine-week term. We do a 10-week term, but it gives us a bit of flexibility if we put it into, we sort of put into a nine thing. And, you know, sometimes it might be that, you know, term one, there's usually uh, so many events that, that eat into your time. So you're sort of pushing things back. So this is very flexible. But you can see that's the things we do. That's where the performance comes in, listening, composition, and appreciating. There, That's how it all fits in so that you're covering all areas of the course. And again, if you want to know more, please pause the video so you can have a good look. The next unit, which I really think every kid should know, is about the instruments of the orchestra. Now, we're going to be looking at world music as well, so don't think that I'm just being European-centred here, but it just gives a good grounding for how instruments sound and a good overall um, understanding of instrumental um, performance techniques. That's the main thing and how they're classified. So the next unit of work focuses on the instruments of the orchestra. This unit will provide an immersive exploration of the diverse and captivating world of orchestral instruments. This unit allows students to discover the wide range of instruments, their unique sound qualities and characteristics, performance techniques, as well as how they are classified inst in into instrumental families. 
Through engaging listening activities and fun videos to see the instruments being performed, your students will gain a comprehensive understanding of the strings, woodwind, brass and percussion sections of the orchestra. Now, in that, I link to there's um, some BBC videos and um, the guy that actually shows each instrument of the orchestra, like my kids sort of go, it's a bit like the Wiggles. Sorry if you don't know what I'm talking about, but that's um, the Wiggles is a, um, a children's um, a musical group that you know little kids love. Anyway, they're all dressed in skivvies, these guys. And the conductor is, hello, my name is Grant and I'm the conductor of the orchestra. And then he talks about, you know, the woodwind um, or percussion or whatever it is, the families. The kids love it. Like they're only short little videos, but they get to see each instrument. They get to hear what it sounds like and get to see them actually in action, how they're actually being performed. They're nice, nice short little videos. Anyway, by examining the roles and in timbres of each instrument family, develops a um, your students will develop a discerning ear and appreciation for the intricate interplay of sounds within an orchestral composition. This unit empowers students to recognise and identify various instruments, fostering a lifelong connection to the enchanting realm of orchestral music. Now, I can't tell you the number of times I've actually um, had kids listen to, say, In the Hall of the Mountain King, which is a very famous piece okay but it's been it's opened a door to classical music for them and they've said you know I've talked to kids you know that I, I um taught years ago and they go you know I still really like that piece and actually because of that I do this this and this and it you know a lot of our kids don't get that um that opportunity to hear orchestral music so why not give them that opportunity in the music classroom so as you can see, this is what they do. We look at the, in, the orchestra. We look at different part, the families, the kids. Um, this is probably one thing I do print out, okay, is actually um, there's blank ones there for the kids to fill in. So the parts of the violin, so they'd actually write down on those things there as well as labelling the instruments. But it gives a good idea. Now, if you have access to these instruments, it's fantastic to bring them into the classroom and say, this is what a flute looks like. This is what a violin looks like. This is what it sounds like. These are the sorts of things. I don't have access to all those sorts of instruments. I have some, but not all of them. My previous school, we had a few, but we didn't have a lot of strings. My current school, a few more strings. Um, and my colleague is a, um, an, a violinist herself. So, you know, she can actually, I'll say, can you come in and show the kids how to play it? Because if I play the violin, it sounds like I'm murdering a cat. I'm sorry, but I'm just not a string player. <laughs> play guitar and banjo and ukulele, give me those, but don't give me a violin. Um but you know, the kids actually go, oh, wow. And to actually handle a, a flute and feel what a flute you know, is like, at the moment, um, having Lizzo in the, um, the uh, like as a popular musician, popular singer, kids are actually getting more involved in, like they're surprised that, oh, that person actually plays flute. The flute's all right. I could, that sounds like a good instrument I could do. Anyway, it's a good way to get them into it. And again, Pause the, this video to see how it all connects. Now, normally when I'm doing this instruments of the orchestra, I'm probably teaching the guitar, maybe the guitar, maybe keyboard. Okay, depends on the, um, what we've got available because between myself and my colleague, we will swap instruments, okay? And um, we might even do both. But anyway, you can see that. But the thing is what we try and do is play pieces that are famous for the orchestra. So we're not necessarily playing orchestral instruments, but we're playing things might be... Um, Ode to Joy, sorry, I had to think of it, famous piece, but the kids, you know, you listen to it, you see it being played by um, the orchestra and sung by um, a, a, a choir, and the kids actually have a go at playing it, all right, that's a fantastic one for them to do, but there's lots of little pieces like that that are famous by um, orchestral pieces that you get them to play, you could do it on tune percussion, on tune, like not necessarily on tune percussion, but you know, get the kids playing instruments, get them playing pieces of music that are orchestral music, even if it's not on on an orchestral instrument, that doesn't matter. Again, pause it so you can see how things all fit in. There's an assignment. Now, I should have said there's an assignment to go with that other one as well, which we'll talk about very shortly. But my favourite assignment, this one, is that make an instrument one. Next unit is world music. You can't do music in year seven, especially without introducing some sort of world music. So the third unit to teach in general music classroom is the world music unit. 
This lesson, these lessons um, in this unit will take your students on a captivating global journey, exploring the rich and diverse musical cultures of Africa, China, Indonesia. Now, they're the three that I have chosen because that's instruments I have mainly access to personally. But you might want to do other world cultures because it depends on where you teach in the world and maybe what sort of background your students have and you can make some sort of connection that way. So obviously you don't have to necessarily use this unit, but you might want to use um, like try a different culture, up to you. This unit exposes students to the vibrant sounds, rhythms, instruments, and cultural context of these regions. Through engaging listening experiences, hands-on activities on tuned and untuned percussion instruments, and a wide variety of listening experiences, your music students will gain a deeper understanding and appreciation for the unique musical expressions found within each culture. Now, sometimes I've done world music before I've done instrument um, or instruments of the orchestra. It depends on, again, the, um, the kids, and we haven't had necessarily things normal for a few years. But um, djembes, kids love playing them. In terms of um, China and Indonesia, Indonesia, we focus on the gamelan. So it is using those tuned percussion instruments, okay, that like the, works really well. And again, with China, um, there's like in terms of the gong and the Chinese bells, and they can make connections that way using tuned and untuned percussion instruments. And I should say like for Africa, the marimba um, and, and kalim, yeah, the kalimba, like the thumb piano. I don't have it there behind me, um, thumb piano as well as um, the balafon, okay, which all relate to one another and very similar, obviously, to a xylophone glockenspiel. By exploring the rhythmic complexities of African drumming, now if you don't have djembes, do pocket drumming, the melodic intricacies of Chinese traditional instruments and the gamelan ensembles of Indonesia, students develop a broader perspective of music as a universal language that tr transcends boundaries. This unit cultivates cultural appreciation, fosters empathy and inspires students to embrace the beauty and diversity of world through the transformative power of music. And it's just a fun unit to do. As I said, the kids really like doing that one. And I pair this one with a, um, a performance and composition assessment. As you can see, we've got different things there, African, Indonesia, and I've also China. Um, now, the thing is, each for each of these, I've got a tuned percussion song to play. Now, it is written like you can see on the page there. So that ABC, you know, is da 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 so that um, you can actually do it nice and easy and kids don't have to be able to read music. And I realise there's a mistake on that, but anyway, won't go there. And again, pause this, you can see the performance. This is heavily performance and a bit of listening, a bit of appreciation, but it's about getting the kids on the instruments, playing songs, um, having fun, listening, and then doing their own arrangement of a piece of music, um, an African folk tune, and you might want to use a Chinese or an even an Indonesian one. And the last one is film music. Now, this usually brings me up to the very end of the year. The reason we do film music at the end is because there's so many interruptions and I've or usually done all of my assessment by now and we just have a bit of fun and it means we've got an excuse to actually watch a movie. Sorry, but, you know, it's in my program. Can't, can't tell me that you can't watch a movie. That's my theory. Anyway, so the last unit to teach is film music, and it is a perfect way to finish the school year. The film music unit offers a captivating journey into rich history of music in the cinema. This general music unit will immerse your students um, in the diverse and influential world of film scores, exploring iconic compositions, legendary composers such as John Williams, and the profound impact of music on storytelling. By delving into the historical context of film music, students gain a deeper appreciation for the art form and learn to analyse and interpret the ways in which music enhances the cinematic experience. Through listening activities, discussion and even hands-on ex composition exercises, this unit sparks curi students' curio curiosity and nurtures their understanding of the vital role music plays in shaping emotions, creating atmosphere and heightening the impact of visual storytelling in films. You can learn more about the film music unit um, in this there's a video specifically on that particular unit, which I'll show you now. That's the cover. So seven creative and fun film music lesson ideas for your music classroom. So if you want to go and have a look, that goes deeper into that film music unit. And again, you can see the different things that are covered. Now, by this stage, I've taught all the instruments I want to teach. So I'll let kids have a go on whatever instruments they want to do. But again, choose film songs that they want to play. My kids love playing I'm a Believer from um, Shrek. They always do. 
Eye of the Tiger. They like playing that one. Things that you don't expect. Um, if if we were doing a karaoke lesson, film music karaoke, okay, and where the kids are singing, usually not always good, but you sometimes great. The number of kids that want to sing, that whole class will want to sing Let It Go. They just will. <laughs> it never ceases to amaze me. But, you know, this is a good one to actually do all the um, film music and, again, film music, theme songs, all that sort of fun stuff. It's a nice way to end the year, give them a, um, a go on the instruments they want to play. It's fun. And, again, if you want to pause it, okay, I suggest there. Now, I should have said in each one of these um, units of work, I give you listening pieces, okay, pieces to listen to throughout, um, focusing on the elements or the concepts of music. And I also give you plenty of pieces to perform, so with links to them, so that you can see, um, listen to the song and learn the song that way. And then also obviously the, um, the guitar chords, um, which is just, you know, links to it. So in the lyrics and all those sorts of things. So you can you can get your music that way. But I suggest you actually buy your music, um, whatever is going to suit for your kids. You don't have to use the ones that I've suggested, but it's a good um, starting point. Um, but choose music that's going to work for your kids. Choose a film that your kids are going to want to play, uh, watch um, with this film music unit. All right, four assessments in um, to use in general music. So these ones you can't teach with anything. You've got to have something to report on. Let's face it, we all do. So in the music classroom, utilising a variety of assessments that cover skills in listening, performing and composing is of paramount importance. You've got to be able to assess somehow. Using a variety of, class, of assessment methods enables you to holistically evaluate your students' musical growth and provide them with a comprehensive understanding of their strengths and areas for improvement. Now, I haven't put it in here, but there is another video on this channel, which is 12 formative assessment ideas for your music classroom. So if you're looking for more assessment ideas, go and watch that video. There are three main areas that a student should be assessed on in the general music classroom. Performance, playing instruments, listening and appreciating, as well as composing. They're the three things, okay? You might have appreciation on its own, but for me, I have those three areas. To help both you and your students be successful in music assessments, on the next few slides, I've got four assessments that pair with each of the units, okay? So that you don't have to reinvent the wheel for each unit. Teach, teach, teach. Give the assessment. Give them time in class to do it. Then you've got some sort of assessment and you've got something you can talk about with the kids um, on their reports. First one, rhythm and rap, composition and performance. The kids this age love working together and give them a chance to do that. So this assessment will have your students working together to create a short rap based on their understanding of rhythm, note, names and values. Now in it, I actually give you like a little um, verse, I suppose, to um, the kids to actually start their, perform their composition um, and performance from. But they can use their own they can come up with their own if they want to. You might just want to give some guidelines and it has to be, you know, certain parameters. They can only do certain things and and not use certain words and all that sort of stuff. So, and you know, you, you're, you're smart. You can do that. So it goes without saying this uh, um, assessment works best with the rhythm and rap unit. Now, the thing is they work together. They have to arrange it and they have to perform it. And then in, individually, they're actually also um, completing the booklet that goes with this so that, even if the kids might, um, with any assessment, if you're doing a group assessment, there has to be individual accountability so that the kids who um, who do all the work are going to do better than the kids who choose not to do too much in the booklet, okay, or the actual diary, journal, whatever you want to call it, okay. Uh, it just makes it more fair that way. So there might be some kids who just want to do all the fun part. They don't want to do the written part, and it does make a big difference to the end. And you can see here, so in each assessment, you get a cover page, you get some marking criteria, um, and you also get um, the actual task description. And you can see there, one, two, three, four, a whole note is helpful for one, two, one, two, a half note is only with two. Like that's sort of how you could do that. But they could use their own words. Next one, make an instrument, performance and music appreciation. So this one is mainly focused on, um, they've got to make an instrument, which goes without saying. But then they've actually got to complete how the sound is made, um, what, how is it classified, and that's how that music appreciation ties in, and it goes with the orchestra, instruments of the orchestra unit. So in this assignment, students will show their creativity and ingenuity by making their own instrument. The catch in this instrument, in this assignment, is that the student must perform something on their handmade instrument that lasts for 30 seconds. 
This assessment will have students demonstrating their understanding of instrument classification, sound production methods, as well as composing and performing skills. This assignment pairs really well with the instruments of the orchestra unit. Now, the thing is, 30 seconds, you go, oh, that's not too long. I tell you what, you try playing 30 seconds on a, on a maraca, a shaker that they've made. If they, it, That's a long time. Okay, and it, it, it's it's not easy to do that. So that's where you get you talk to them about well, what sort of um what sort of sounds can you make with that with your instrument? How can you make that interesting? And again, it comes into that um tone, color, timbre, performing media, all those things as well. So it's just you know it ties in with lots of the, lots of different ways. Um, I've had some really great instruments made in the past. I've had some interesting interesting <laughs> instruments made. Um, one kid decided to use a pumpkin. Um, to make a guitar it rotted in the cl- in the staff room we couldn't un- work out where the smell it's coming from and we worked it out pretty quick so you know put some guidelines on it um, my colleague and I never thought we'd have to say please do not use something that's going to rot <laughs> to make your instrument but you do have to do some weird things kids will do things to surprise you Again, as you can see, a cover page, a planning page, and an actual task page. But there's more in there. There's self-reflection questions, um, and as well as a, a writing part. Like they've actually got to do um, the the procedure on how they made their instrument, the like the techniques used to make a sound, how's it classified, all that sort of thing. The next one, movie composition assignment. Now, again, if you're doing this um, film music at the end of the year, this could be something that um, is not necessarily assessed because you might have already finished your reporting, but it's a good thing to actually do in class just to give them some experience on using um, some uh, recording software that you have available, whether that be GarageBand or BandLab or um, Soundtrap. They're the three main ones that um, a lot of people use. So there's movie composition assignment. This assignment is best completed using online composition technology such as BandLab, Soundtrap, or even Mario Paint Composer, or it's Daniel X Composer. Um, that's another freebie, and it's great for that like game, um, video game 80 sort of sounding. You, when you, if you go and have a look, you'll know what I mean. You can, of course, choose whatever technology you have available to you. What's going to work for you? What do you have available in your classroom? Both Mario Paint Composer and BandLab are free, especially if you have to go to edu.bandlab. Bad lab, that's a free one. Don't use the BandLab, BandLab one because you have to pay but edu.bandlab you can. And your school and your school district will have different rules, so you may not be able to access these. Soundtrap is like BandLab, but you have to pay for it. So um, the uh, BandLab is free, and I've used it in the past, and it works very well. Um, but, again, it's it's up to you what you want to do. My colleague used to like Soundtrap, but it, we couldn't afford the um, for every child to have, a, you know, this limited budget. We didn't have um, enough money for every single child that did music to actually have their own account for Soundtrap because that would have cost, that would have been my whole budget and that wasn't going to happen. Um, but your district, as I said, might have restrictions. So please investigate before you give that assignment um, to the kids. So you can see here that this assignment will get your kids creating and composing music for a video scene or recording that you want them to use. For example, in the past, personally, I've used these videos that were created by digital media student, students. So the kids had actually in another class had made these horror little horror films and then my kids got the, made the actual music to go with it. Or you could try having your students create a short 30-second video. You might come up with a video um, together that they add music to. This works especially well if you have a school-wide project that needs to be created. In, this, in the past, I've also had my students create videos for new students explaining things around the school, videos for school rules and expectations, and even to go with a drone video of school events. So we've had kids do all sorts of things. To, again, because it's the end of the year, um, I will often say, is there something we, we um, that might need to be done? So we had... Um, you know, the school had done something for Harmony Day, I think it was, and they had this great footage. So I got kids to actually compose things to go with that that drone footage, and then we used the best one um, for um, the actual um, the promotion side of things. Again, be creative. It doesn't have to be just for the music classroom. And you can see here. Now, if you're not assessing this one, you may not want to use the actual booklet, but you might want to just use the idea. And this last one is what I usually do with the um, world music one, but doesn't necessarily have to be African music. It could be, as I said, a focus on Chinese music, Indonesian music, or whatever music that you've actually chosen to focus on. But again, take the ideas from it and um, adapt it to what you need for your classroom. This is another composition and performance assessment. 
that is great to use while teaching the World Music Unit. In this assignment, students work in, again in small groups to arrange an African folk tune. That's what I personally would do and untuned percussion instruments. There is also the opportunity for your students to complete a written peer review of another group's assessment performance. And I've done that with um, certain groups and other groups I don't. It depends on what we're doing for the year. Um, but what I, the only thing I need to really make clear is whatever you're going to get them to arrange, whatever song you're going to get them to arrange, teach it to the whole class first. So I teach them two different um, folk tunes, um, Obis and Yana, which is the one you sort of saw before, and another one called Banawa. And those two ones, we do class arrangements of them and class performances of them before I let them go off and do their own little small group ones so they know how to play it. So then they can do their arrangements and take ideas from each other and, and whatever else. And there's some fun things. I've got lots of videos of these of kids performing this and it's um, – yeah, it's always fun to see what they can come up with. And again, the assessment and the assignment schedule, the cover page, and that's the Banawa one there. So um, again, it's a nice, simple thing. The one thing I like about Banawa is there's lots of different parts to it. And no matter how they arrange it, whether they're playing them together or whether they're playing in, in different orders, it always sounds good. And that's the thing I like about Banawa. Um, we, again, we just do it on tuned and untuned percussion instruments. It's just a really great little assignment. By integrating carefully selected resources into your general music curriculum, you can transform your general music classroom into a vibrant and engaged learning environment. These carefully created music classroom resources not only will help to reduce behaviour problems, but also will ignite a genuine passion for music in your students. If you want some more ideas on how to make your music classes more interesting and fun for your students, Try the ideas and the five ways to make over your music curriculum download. Use this link here, juliajia.com forward slash make over your music curriculum. And I said, put in the information and you'll get the guide that has five different ways that you can make over your curriculum. If you'd like another freebie that goes with the elements of music blog posts on my blog or here in this um this channel, there's lots of videos on the elements of music. Go to juliajia.com forward slash free mind maps and you'll get um those sent to you as well and if you'd like to know anything else about the elements of music or anything else about teaching music please go to my website juliajew.com or check out all the videos here on this channel but don't forget all the resources I just showed you you can go and get them all ready to go you don't have to do any planning it's all there ready for you at my teachers pay teachers to store at junior teaching resources now there's all these resources are in a couple of different bundles and different options and obviously the different bundles it, there's different things within them so have a look about what's going to suit you and your kids the best and if you got this far thank you so much for watching now i hope i've inspired you to actually think about how you're going to teach your kids um, in general music as so these are classroom test res, um, resources you might want to take some ideas and what's going to work with your kids and just do a couple of the units and um, try and supplement with other ones. Again, depends on what instruments you have available, what you want to teach, how you want to assess. But look, the easiest thing I've found personally is to have all my resources ready for the year. As said, I showed you before the semester two book. I've got a semester one um, somewhere, but we had that ready. And then you didn't have to think about the junior years and you could put more effort into other things. By having all the lessons and the stuff re ready to go, it also meant, sorry, there's some dog bark in the background. I apologize if you can hear it. Um, it meant that I could just teach. And if there was, if the kids were um, not necessarily cooperating, we could adjust really quickly um, how we were actually teaching that. Because, you know, sometimes I'd have to say to my kids, and I'm being realistic here, I've been teaching for a long time, but some classes, I'll give them two choices. We can either do this the easy way or the hard way. Your behavior as you come into the classroom will determine which way we go. And they'll go, oh, what is it? And so you explain, well, the easy way is we read the information and we take a few notes and we get to play the instruments. The hard way is you keep talking, you have to copy out all the notes and we may not get to the instruments. And they go, ah, oh. and usually the penny drops. And you might only have to do it a few times where they actually have to copy out notes, which I hate doing. I really do don't, don't like doing it. However, if it means that everybody's safe in the classroom and everybody is actually attempting to do some sort of um, something, it's much better than having a class that's writing and then you still can't teach. Okay, so it, it's not good for anybody doing it that way. Anyway, that's just my 
my thoughts and my um, thinking on this sort of um, way to do it, but it does make your life so much easier. And I said, you know, someone who's actually done lots and lots of musicals, which you can see, where is it? <laughs> Behind me there. Yeah, I'll go that way. All right. That's a, one of my friends, um, my colleagues, she did that. So I did three musicals at that particular school. And that's me with my djembe. Um, anyway, you know, if you want to do those sort of extracurricular things, which you're expected to as a music teacher, then you have to be able to give yourself some time back somewhere or get some time back somewhere. And why not with your junior classes, give them, um, have your pre-made, everything ready for the year. I literally have everything ready for the year. And then I don't have to think about it. And it makes it so much easier just to come in and teach. All righty. Anyway, until next time, I'm Julia from GU Teaching Resources and happy teaching. Bye.